Hey everybody, we back. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Courtesy Violation. We are the B Pool Hyenas. Yeah. <laughs> That's what sound a hyena makes. <laughs> it's pretty close, actually. Way better than I can yeah. freaking do. Hey man, what's up? That's the hyena <laughs> in uh Lion King. Cheech Marin voices it. Is it Cheech? I, you know, I don't know that I've ever seen the Lion King. Cheek. And I know people are going to be like, bullshit, but I really don't know if I've ever seen it. Yeah, Lion King. So that's like early 90s. Yeah. You, why would you have? Yeah. You're probably a teenager in your 20s. At, not in your 20s. No, in the early God fucking damn. 90s. I'm it's sorry. Age, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. So you're a teenager. You're probably like, yeah, Lion King is not really my well, thing. Yeah. I mean, in, in 90, I was, what, 11? So if it was okay, like 94, yeah. 15 or something. So. Fuck. Yeah, Lion I don't think King. I've ever seen Little Mermaid. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of those I've never seen. You haven't seen a lot of the good classics. Yeah, I probably should watch them, I guess. Oh, at this point, it's too late. Yeah, now it'd be weird. It'd be strange as <laughs> shit. No children around. And if there were, it would even be more weird. <laughs> yeah, somebody else's children. <laughs> yeah. Like, guys, I've never watched Lion King and Little Mermaid and, you know, fucking Dumbo. I was wondering if I could borrow your kids for a little bit. Man, I just like right off the bat, I just want to express my gratitude. I'm so, I'm very grateful today. And I don't know, I'm just happy. Yeah? I'm grateful for the podcast. I'm grateful for my wife and my son. That's awesome. I'm grateful for you. Thank you, buddy. I'm grateful for all the people we've met through the podcast. McCauley. We've met some pretty rad you people. You know, just every, yeah, everybody. I mean, I said McCauley like I'm slugging him, but Big Mike, Drew, Shanked. Mm, but mean, McCauley. But McCauley, yes, he does. <laughs> he does going do back it to for him. me, yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Feeling grateful? Yeah, I am. Uh, Anthony, I'm really grateful for Anthony. He his uh, whole, like his whole mindset is really. I've been really trying to to, uh, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, Anthony from Happy with Par. Mm-hmm. I've been really trying to force that on myself when I'm playing, and it makes it funner. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not stressing. Like we got a pretty. It's a big tournament for me because it's kind of my home course this weekend. I'm playing MA40, which is. Full of some killers, really. Um, I didn't realize you were playing MA40, yeah. actually. I'm going to play MA40 all year, yeah. Nice. But it, it's full of killers, so not huge expectations, but I, I think I would be a little more nervous just because it's my home course and I'd want to perform a little bit better, but right. like, really not feeling any nerves. I'm just going to go out there and have fun, be happy with par. I'm happy with par. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really am. Like, we went and played that practice round the other day, and I was, tried to keep that mindset, and it, it kind of worked for me. No shit. I mean, yeah, it's probably the best round I'd shot to the long pin locations in a long time. So. Yeah. We'll see. Weather's not going to be fucking spectacular, so. Yeah, that's true. It's supposed to rain on us. But that's also, I mean, that can uh, that can be a great uh, equalizer, right? Sure. I mean. It could. I, have, I do have an advantage with my short fucking run-up. I don't need, I don't really worry about slipping too much. I mean, I don't have the best, uh, what do they call that? You're. Your base when you plant your foot, your um, shoot. I've watched so many form oh, videos. Motor like, skills. No, form the when you your your uh, brace. Brace. Okay. Yeah, your brace. I don't really have a great brace, which probably make, like takes a lot of power from me. But also, I don't worry about slipping on split T pads. Sure. That, so. Yeah. And just the idea of carrying the thought, of, like just being happy with par, into the whole thing. I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm going to let it get to me. I just want to see how our games differ. Um, you go in cool, calm, collected. That's me. I'm going to go in. Cucumber. I'm going to go in. Is that re- a cucumber in your pocket or <laughs> just calm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that a cucumber in your pocket or you just have a hard penis? <laughs> I'm going to go into it just fucking ripping cigarettes, just high energy, a few energy drinks before the round <laughs> on an empty stomach. No. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no. You're and, not going to uh, stop and get a uh, breakfast or nothing? Uh, no, I'm not mm. going to. No, of course I'm going to. I've yeah. got to eat. Got to eat before a round. That's a big, that's a stupid move to go in on an empty stomach. Especially if it's a, you know you don't plan on going and grabbing something. You yeah. know, an hour sometimes is tight. I always take my lunch, but, you yeah. know, I mean, I am that, uh, that uh, kind of old school guy. I'd rather take my own lunch than try to go eat something somewhere. But it really, an hour is kind of tough because everybody from the tournament's going to subway yeah you can't, yeah, you can't yeah, go yeah. to fucking subway yeah, yeah is that the is that the place they go to i there? think so yeah. yeah 
Yeah, well, I think I went to Zaxby's down there too, and uh, also that's just you look around and you see a lot of disc golf. That's funny when you're at a <clears throat> when you're playing a tournament in a shitty little town that has like two or three places to eat, and you look around and you're like. I just yeah. played with him, him. <laughs> I know all of these people. Yeah. It's a bunch of disc golfers that had nowhere else to go but here to eat. That's always funny to see. Like, oh, you love Subway? No, man, this is all they got. I'm grateful for Subway. You're just I'm grateful. I'm grateful for packing my lunch. God, I feel like such a douchebag over here. I'm just being negative, and you're like, you got to just fucking Dude, I am. It. You got to take it the, in. The last few days I've been in a, um, a very positive I've noticed. mind frame, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know... I like it. I've been uh, working on myself. So that's awesome. Losing some weight—that's always good. Yeah. Like it always makes me feel better. I mean, God knows I'll probably gain it back because that's what I do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I lost uh, 14 pounds last week. So Operation Bigger Bird is what I'm calling it <laughs> because you know uh, we've talked about this before. I think every they say every 20 pounds you gain like what was it five eighths of I an forget inch what or it was. Yeah. three quarters of an inch. Uh, I mean. You're not really gaining yeah. wean. You're just losing the fat around it. So, yeah. nice. so well, I mean, the 14 pounds last month, that's gained probably like a half half inch of wean. I'm that's guessing. fucking rad. Yeah. You should surely be able to notice just from looking at it. I still can't see it. My gut's too big. <laughs> You're like, I'm assuming it's bigger down yeah, there. Yeah, but, but I'm laying down and like getting a weird position. Like, yeah, it looks a little bigger. It feels bigger. <laughs> yeah. So. That's all well, I mean. If it feels bigger, I mean. To me, not to <laughs> <laughs> No one else thinks it looks or feels bigger, but. <laughs> I think it does. You know who I, I do? I'm, I'm grateful for Terry. Miller Terry Miller. And his crew, Spicy Boy. Spicy Boy, I, I know you listen. Mm-hmm. Grateful for you. Um, what a, I mean, they did great. They were pumping the memorial. They really content. were. They were pumping it out. Like, it was, as soon as I get done, I'm like, man, I wonder when that next one. Boom. It yeah. was just there. I was like, shit. Yeah, dude. and he was on it about posting it, too. Like, yeah. plugging it. Like, hey. No disc off to watch? Watch this watch shit. shit. Yeah. yeah. Grateful for uh, the goose. He was great doing commentary. Uh, yeah. You mentioned earlier in the week you, when you were talking to me, like, I think the more and more I'm, I listen to him, I hear him speak. I hear, like, he's a really likable guy. He really is. I think he's a great uh, a great ambassador for the sport. I do too. Yeah. Like, I think he puts on a good face for the sport. He, he seems intelligent. And he, like you said, he's a good ambassador, it seems like. Uh, yeah. He's, he seems like a, a very good commentator. I liked him. I like listening to him. Yeah, but especially like one thing in particular that made me think it was watching him comment on Jacob Cordes taking a long time to putt, whatever his 50-second average. Yeah, I thought he said 48 seconds, something, maybe that's somewhere around 50 seconds. Yeah. yeah, too fucking long. But he had made the comment of like, hey, well, that's kind of on me. I'm like, man, this look at this guy yeah. holding himself accountable. Yeah. Just being like, well, you know, I mean. What's, it what it what's your thoughts on it? I mean, like, are you calling somebody else? No, are, never. Like, I'm even, a pussy. Even, in, even if you were in PO. Yeah. You wouldn't. It's hard for me to put my head there because, yeah, I'm not, but probably not. I probably I would probably be one of the people that kept my mouth shut and would just be like, this fucking guy. Yeah, what, you what if you noticed, like, and I think Gossage did say something about this, like, he felt himself being he, rushing himself because Cupcake was taking so long and it was setting him back. Yeah. Now, do you ever get in that position? Because I 100% do. Like, if I feel a card, we're backing up. Yeah, or someone's waiting I feel on like you. I'm, I feel like I'm rushed. In golf and in disc golf, like, both the same way. I don't like to be, I would rather be waiting behind somebody than be the one that I'm feeling sure. like I'm being pushed. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I'd rather be pushing than getting pushed. Yeah, I'd rather. You know what I mean? <laughs> be, I'd rather be giving than taking. Exactly. Yeah. And I get that 100. percent I mean, I know I didn't even think about that as far as backups go from waiting on the card. So you're trying to hurry up, and it's making you rushing your game because somebody else on your card's taking 48 seconds every putt. Yeah. And so the whole thing was too is like it's not a DGPT event, so they don't have. Uh, they don't have their dudes there that are kind of enforcing that rule. It's on the card, which is what it's supposed to be anyways. Yeah. It's kind of a uh, card ruling. But I'm with, dude, I'm with those guys. I, I wouldn't say shit. I really wouldn't. I would be like, I wish someone would say something to these guys because I don't <laughs> want to. Yeah, would you second it if somebody else, because 
Gossage yeah, did say that. He said yeah. if somebody would have called him out, he <laughs> yeah, would have second. You mean if my dad stepped up and said something, I'd be like, yeah. I'd be hiding behind them. Like, Hurry. Yeah. I think it did take 50 seconds. <laughs> now, the thing with me is I, I probably wouldn't either. I'm not, I mean, I probably wouldn't. I would second it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the exact same shoes as you and Aaron yeah. Gossage. But... You'd be the hop guy. You'd be like, yeah, you did take fucking too long. <laughs> I'd be the one in the back going, this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like pointing at my eyes. You know? <laughs> yeah. There'd be subtle hints. I wouldn't say anything, but I would be like, like looking down at the watch. Like he's, there's no watch on your wrist. You're just like tapping on it. Like this guy's taking too long. You know what? This And this fucks me or doesn't fuck me up, but this is what blows my mind. If I were to stand behind the putt for 45 seconds, I would mind fuck myself. Yeah, talk yourself into missing So it. bad that there's no way I would make anything more than a 10. I mean, yeah. don't think, just putt. I yeah. mean, I don't understand <laughs> that. You know, you, you hear that. Don't think, just putt, right? Don't, don't overthink it. Just make the putt. That's 20 seconds is sometimes overthinking it. We're talking about. 50 seconds, Yeah, it's a long time. That's a long time yeah. to convince yourself that this motherfucker's not going to Well, the thing is, like, with, you know, Gannon Bird also historically takes a long time to putt. He makes a lot of those fucking things. Though. Yeah. So it's like... Well, Cupcake's a hell of a putter, too. Sure, but you love to see... What you want is for them to take too long and then miss that yeah, motherfucker so, yeah. and then be like, all right, man, yeah. you see? I believe Gossage says something like that. He's like... <laughs> It's a difference whenever somebody's taking 50 seconds and they're missing the putts and when, oh, when yeah. they're making Because if they take 50 seconds and then miss it, you got another 50 seconds. <laughs> I mean, could you, that, yeah. that one, that one hole he three putted and, it, and I think Gosser said it was like three minutes for the three putts. That's wild. Yeah. A minute a putt. Well, I mean, I think that was walking to the next lie too or whatever, but. He was like, we were, we sat there. He, he, he I think Gosser asked him like, you care if I tap out? And then, because he said, I just waited three minutes for yeah. the three putts or whatever. But, um, yeah, man, it's it's hard. I don't, you know, I don't blame Cupcake. It's till somebody fucking calls him out on it, sure. fucking do it, man. Really? I, mean, I kind of blame Cupcake. I like the kid, but he knows. Oh, no, he, he they said what, he talks about it. Like, you know, he, he said he, he can't get it to come out of his hand. He said them pump fakes. Yeah. They're, he's planning on putting, yeah. and he just, he can't do it. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, he has someone like has casted a spell on him, and you're like, <laughs> and it's just like their mind making the putter stay in his hand, and he's like <laughs> using his powers to be like, so out. It's like a Jedi mind fuck and back and forth. About 53 seconds later, he finally wins, and the putt leaves his hand, <laughs> goes in. He, he, he does have, have a nice putt. He really does have a decent putt. Yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, you that should was, see him drive. That was yeah, no shit. The dude's got a arm like hell. He really do. That was a big. That was a big thing this weekend, though. Then the coverage was cupcakes, fucking. Oh, it was a big topic of conversation. Mm-hmm. Sure, I mean it's going to be the rest of the year. That it last year it was with Burr and a few other guys. Like it's it's going to continue to be a thing talked about. I'm sure. I, I can't until wait until it gets enforced. Well, see, which... and that's that's the thing, right? Like they're in DGPT. I believe mm-hmm. if you do not call them out and ma- and make sure your card's staying up to speed. Then you have a time marshal come and yeah. they time everybody on the card. Yeah. So that that would make you that would fuck with your head. Like now no I've got to speed up. Now a the whole bit. class has to write sentences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't bring enough time for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> didn't bring enough time for anybody. You can't. You didn't bring enough time to share with the class. Okay. Well, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, maybe that will encourage them during those tournaments to uh, call them out. Yeah. Know? Uh. Probably, I mean, there's probably, and also, I'm sure there's a few of those dudes that aren't afraid to be like, all right, let's, you know, let's go. Yeah. But, you know, it throws the, it could throw the mood off, man. It definitely like, does. I've never played with, I've never been in that situation at such a, you know, high risk, high reward, you know, just the, with the situation being as, what the fuck's the word I'm looking for? But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, they make our living doing that. Sure. It's so very stressful. Yes. So like I couldn't imagine. I don't know exactly how they handle it or what the thought process process is behind not saying anything, but I could imagine like it's just gonna. It, you don't want it to be weird in a card now. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the energy is huge. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to have a good time, dude. I don't want guys to think I'm just like. <laughs> plus, there's this whole idea that like 
if you say something, people are like, this guy's a fucking stickler for the rules. <laughs> and that kind of looks lame as shit. And over here at Courtesy Violation, we ain't all about that. No, we ain't no rules. No, we smoke cigarettes on the fucking on P- PDGA sanctioned events. I do. But yeah, it's a. Uh, we're definitely not about the rules, but. No. The thing, man, I don't know. I, I would, I hundred percent wouldn't call him out. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I would second it. Yeah, you know, I would second it. <laughs> Same thing. I would be like, yeah, he's right. It is taking a little long for you. I would, I, it would probably. I'd be really nice about it. I'd be like, well, I guess it kind of has been taking me a little bit longer than it has been taking us. I haven't really been paying too much attention though, man. <laughs> I'd probably, yeah, that's probably it. But Gain and Burr come away with the big dubs. Yeah, let me uh, let me go over the scores for uh, the Memorial Championship. We'll just run through the top ten. Do the FBO first. Of course, buddy. Of course. Did you think I would forget? Because <laughs> I about did. <laughs> that's course, why I said something. Course own Scoggins. Yes. Well, two or three out. years in a row. Uh, I know two. I didn't yeah. know if it was three or not. It might, it might just be two. Yeah. I think Jen Allen might have won the year before that. But yeah, I'm not, I'm she, sure. she wins a lot of them over there, yeah. historically. Uh, speaking of, dude, and the score separation between first and second. Holy shit. Own Scoggins wins at 26 down. Second place, Jennifer Allen, 18 down. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't realize it was eight strokes. I didn't either. I knew she, I knew she had a lead, but I mean... The, Pretty good lead. I did not realize. I didn't watch the. I didn't check the final round. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I didn't watch any of the FPO. I'm also not gonna lie. But th- that is interesting. Like obviously, like <clears throat> in FPO, it does tend to be the ones that that has that high, the higher score separation. Yeah. Right? Like it could be between. Say, that's not uncommon. But between first and second place, eight strokes. That eight strokes. Yeah, that's wild. Pretty wild. So awesome to see Owen out there, starting off pretty hot. Jennifer Allen too. Yeah. She she, she always does well there. For yeah. sure. Or at that tournament. There's two courses, but Well Jennifer Allen must be in her Oh man. Don't, don't do not, it. Don't do it. Don't yeah, do it, right. dude. She, Jennifer Allen's great. <laughs> She's great. That's all She's in her late twenties, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have to lie and make it. <laughs> Third place. Violet Maine. Oh yeah. Not familiar with her, I'll be uh, honest with really? you. Really? Oh, yeah. Violet? She used, she was on that one uh, show, that movie. Oh, with yeah, where, well, yeah, where she eats the thing and blows up really <laughs> yeah. big, and they have the midgets roll around. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And they have that. They sent her to the juicing. They did. Send her, take her to the juicing. <laughs> I remember. Well, she's doing great. She got third place at the memorial, so good to see her doing well after that juicing st- <laughs> accident. Uh, Hannah Stepovich at uh, fourth place, three down. Eight Once nine. again with the score separation. So the score separation from second at 18 down to third at eight down. So there's 10 strokes. Yeah. Wow. And then fourth was what? Fourth would be plus two. So I'm going to beat her Hannah by Stepovich. 19 strokes? Stefanovic. Uh, what did Owen finish? Uh, 26 down. Oh, wow. So, she, so 24 20, strokes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's huge. Big separation. Pretty good. <laughs> Big separation. I'll be honest with you. The rest of them, I'll just go ahead and mention them just to run through the top ten. But Sophia Donecki, Katarina. St- oh, man. The European names are in Is it Katarina? Me. Or is it Katrina? K-A-T-A-R-I-N-A. Oh, Katarina. Katarina. Fucking Katarina wine mixer. Oh, wine mixer, dude. <laughs> Fucking. Stepbrother. <laughs> Even Catalina wine mixer. Kimberly Dickerson. Do you think? It is. No. Yeah. It is what? <laughs> he played FPL. He is Chris Dickerson with a wig. Yeah. And he's like. He didn't even shave his beard, dude. <laughs> if she can do it, so can I. He just fucking puts the wig on. It's fucking Chris. Yeah. Kimberly Dickerson, though, tied sixth place. Uh, Joe Henderson. Oh, Joe. Eighth yeah. place, Joe, her, yeah. of course. No, I really... We, we, oh, do you really, yeah, actually? Yeah, follow her, yeah. Okay. I know who she is. Lillian Waite. Okay. Tied with, uh, for ninth place with Ashley Phelps at 14 over. That's your top 10 FPO. Oh, that's a good top 10. It's a good top 10. Yeah. Big score separation. Let's look at the score separation for the men. So, Gannon Burr obviously won it. Gannon, big GB. Yeah. And... 
that was pretty wild to watch. That last round, watching that two-stroke swing. I mean, right off the bat on hole one, you know, Aaron Gossage, I think, was leading by a few strokes. I don't know, I'm going to fuck this he up. Was, he was leading going into the last round. And he immediately took a fucking bogey right off hole one. Then I think he ended up leading again, losing the lead on hole nine, and then couldn't really recuperate since. Big putting woes that you see from... Always, man. But also mixed in with some great fucking drives and some other good putts. Yeah. It's just the inconsistency. Yeah. And Gannon gave him a few opportunities. There was multiple opportunities that... There was two I know of that he laid up, laid putts up just because maybe the green was too treacherous or the wind. It it seems like we say the same thing about Gossage as we do like Evelina and Henna. Like, you're not going to find a better thrower, thrower of the disc than Aaron Gossage. Yeah. Forehand, backhand, he has he has all of them. Quack. But when it comes to the green, it's he, he struggles there, man. Yeah. And uh, it's... And you know what, Aaron? We get it. Yeah. Me too. We do too. We also struggle on the putting green. Yeah. But really, man, the rest of his game is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, he he has a he throws harder. He might throw harder than anybody. I'm not saying as far. Yeah, but that son of a bitch throws hard. (laughs) It was cool to watch that last round and listen to Gannon actually do the commentary because, like, it gives you insight on just how fucking uh, how wise he is as a player, as a kid, as a kid. Yeah, 19 years old and still like. So much insight into the game, like he, he, I don't know, leaps and bounds over a lot of people. I would assume. Yeah, they say as far as they say it, when it comes to this you know, knowledge. Yeah, they say he's uh, very smart when it comes yeah. to this the game. Like absolutely, I believe it. I can, I can. It translates. Um, but yeah, it. I was kind of wanting to see Aaron, which you know, it was next day coverage or whenever that was released. I didn't end up watching it till yesterday, but I. Uh, I did notice, like, it, I already knew who won. Yeah. But I was wanting to see Aaron do something, but I'm a Gannon Burr fan anyway, so yeah, fuck it. Yeah, well, I like both of them. Congrats, Gannon. I, and it, the crazy thing was AB, that round, the second round. Oh, yeah. 17 down, birdied 17 holes in a row. Yeah. He uh, he he parred the first one because they were playing uh, that, that hole that you know, they had to cover the water and it goes to the left. You know, yeah. and I guess he went OB there, and then he made his putt. He'd been putting for three, and uh, so he parred in hole one and then went and birdied 17 holes in a fucking row. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, yeah. man. It's pretty odd. It's for an 11-13 rated round. Is it 13 now? It was at one. It was 11-14, but it, 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 it was unofficial. That was unofficial. Yeah, so it, it could I believe it could the be official changing. rating. It, oh, <laughs> got it right here. Uh... We'll just run through it real fast. So you got Gannon Burr in first place. Uh, Aaron Gossage, of course, at second. Anthony Barella, third place with his 11-13 second round. Mm. So it was 11-13. It was, and then he followed it up with like a 10-13. Yeah, they said it was... Uh, for, there's not many times that somebody's shot uh, 1,100 didn't follow it up with a 100-point below round. Boy, he really did go 10-20, 11-13, 10-13. 10, 12. And by the way, over a thousand is great, but <laughs> yeah. for these guys, well, ratings is rating, whatever, but like these guys, you're shooting lower thousands. It's not going to win you tournaments. Probably not. No, not, in, than, not in these DGP, not in these big events like that. Which it wasn't a DGP. T- it's just an A series, but regardless, A tier. It's um, a big tournament. I it's mean, still it, a yeah, big tournament. It's, yeah. The Memorial is always huge. For sure. Uh, Paul Ulibarri. What about that yeah. in fourth place? Also, getting to watch him on the lead card the last round, so fucking rad. Yeah. And, hear, and hearing Gannon talk about him, too, it was funny because uh, he was so many strokes off the pace. And uh, Gannon, uh, Terry's like, any any worries about Ulberry over here? And he's just like, no, not really, but he's just out here having a good time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of like, eh, not really concerned about that. He's so far away. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but, to, but to be able to see him out there and compete, like, yeah. To that level, it's awesome. I know he started kicking ass last year again after the injury, and love Paul Littleberry. Yeah, love him. Want to marry him? 
Uh, Isaac Robinson. I didn't get to see much of his play. Hi, Rob. Over the weekend. But tied, uh, not tied, but solo fifth place at 23 down. Uh, Drew Gibson, of course. Also pretty rad. Uh, kind of surpri- kind of surprising for me. I don't know why. Yeah, not on that course. That's, that's sure. That like, should be that's his, like yeah, one of his home fair. courses, I guess. So, but I mean, he he's come back from injury too, so yeah. we'll see. I yeah, mean, he, he hasn't. Might, he didn't play last year. No, right? so he 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 might come out have a great year. I kind of hope so too. Yeah. Drew's kind of with me. Drew's kind of like one of those guys that uh, let's I put him in the I put him up there with like Brody, like. I like I like the persona because they just they don't care to stir a little shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we need that. We, yeah. It gives us something to fucking talk about. It really does. It really does. Plus, they need all the traffic on their YouTube channel. And oh, shit. absolutely. So yeah. you got to be saying stuff and, like that and, if you want people to pay attention to you. And this is not a knock on Drew, but he he has, and this is probably crazy for me to even fucking say this. Oh man, say it. But he has a form that I think is attainable really by most people. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that they can never throw as far as him, but like he doesn't have the super long, arm. he's a, right. more of a normal bodied human being. Sure. And, uh, I, I love watching his form. Right. Like I'm, I'll never be able to throw like him, but there are certain things I've took from his videos. There's a lot of things I've took from his videos that I think have helped me for sure. Yeah. His so. style, in particular, you dress just like him on the course. <laughs> I would like to. Yeah, he he's, he does dress nicely. Dude, Drew, Drew's getting some poofs. Oh, dude, some poofs. That's half of his persona. Is it's like gotta be. I'm hoping this disc golf thing. This disc golf thing may not get me laid, but how cool I am will. Yeah, he's definitely cool for sure. He's one of the guys that walk into a glass door and make it look cool. Yeah, if you, yeah, I meant to do that. Yeah, that was on purpose. <laughs> That's not my face smirked up against the glass. <laughs> I, was le- I was leaving that there so some lady can lick it off. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant to do. <laughs> so uh, pretty cool to see Drew Gibson up uh, tied for sixth place and yeah. actually competing. I don't, fuck, what was the last thing he played? His first event of the year. Was it? Was this it? This may have been no, the first thing. Well, but he played the Shelly Sharp. Shelly Sharp, yeah. yes. Okay. Same course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember where he was after uh, everything was said and done, but we'll see what he does mm-hmm. this year. I like Drew Gibson. Christopher Robbins tied with Drew Gibson in sixth. Flagstaff, Arizona boy. Not familiar with the name. Also tied for six, Broston Wog. Oh, well, Brost. You know Broston. Yeah. Bra. It's B. Woganator, dude. (laughs) Woganator? Dude, his name is spelled pretty well. B H R A H S T E N. Broston. Broston. Bro. Bro, there's two H's in his first name. That is wild. That should be fucking illegal. That is wild. That's, That's crazy. A of, That's a lot of in a name. That really, and without really the <laughs> just one bra. Bra. Wag. W a u g h. That's enough. Uh, That's Jake enough. Brown also tied for sixth no, place. No Jake Brown. No, no JB, of course, and uh, Nate Metzler. Yeah, oh Nate. Ten. There's your top ten. MPO. They dog for the memorial. They dog in the house. You know Nate. They in the 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 concho de boncho or whatever the <laughs> hell that was a big term at Bradley Williams won. I'm not and I think cat uh cat cat uh, uh uh merch merch one. Uh, FPO. Which one? Hold on, I'm sorry. I, the, I, I the blanked. Gaunch, the gaunch. <laughs> always want to. Yeah, battle at the cooch. Battle at the gooch. What is gooch, it? Yeah. it battle at the gooch. I don't know if this is gaunch or something, but yeah, it, there, was a down ton, the conch, yeah. there was a bunch of fucking people in it. Like, there was a ton of yeah. big name people. Look, you want to find? You want me to find it? Nah, fuck what it. Bradley Williams it. one and Cat Merch one. That's all you need to fucking know. That's also, all. the city of, what is it? The city of Mobile Championship? Mo- Mobile. 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 Mobile uh-huh. homes. <laughs> the city Mobile. of Mobile Homes, more like it. Anyways, uh <laughs> City of Mobile Championship? Uh yeah, probably, or the S- Southern Championship or something. It's one of it's one of Matty O's dads. It's a tournament that's been going on for fucking ever. Well it's one that Matty O won. So yeah. Good for him. Speaking of Matty O, did you see the yeah, I know you did, we were talking about it. The reaction time video that DGP was yeah, DG put up DGPT put out, um, where they were dropping a ruler and seeing who could 
And they said Matty O's reaction time was F F one racer reaction time. That's yeah, it's crazy. And That's he beat nuts. everybody by a long talking about score separation. Yeah, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. He just had to guess. That's what I was thinking. There he was probably just like <laughs> And they were like, we haven't dropped yet. And he's just like, come on. Maybe Matty O's, this is, he, his world's moving so much faster that it's like he's in, you know what I mean? Right. Because he seems like he's in slow motion a little bit. He don't get too excited. He's just. No, but his hands know? are quick. Quick. For those that don't know, they just dropped a ruler. And then they asked a, a few a, a MPO players to catch it as soon as they dropped it. And uh, they measured to see how fast yeah. their reaction time was uh, according to how where their finger was on the ruler. And Matty O. He was, wasn't even, there was nobody even no close. No one was even close. Not even close. That's meth head energy. He's just, <laughs> <laughs> he's quicker than everybody out there. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Let's take a second and tell them how grateful we are for Heiser Creek. I would love to, dude. dude we are so grateful for Heiser Creek. They are two of the, we are, we're starting to develop a really good relationship with James and Josh and, mm-hmm. uh, they just, they're super cool guys. Really cool products. Look, I got the new basket shirt on right now. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. I'm not going to stand up, but uh, it's a, there. this was a pre-order, but now they're releasing some more, I believe Friday of this week. Yeah. And also releasing something that I am stoked about is the Heiser Creek trucker hats. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. Make sure you go over there and check them out. HydroCreepDiscGolf.com. Yep. And you can use code CVPOD at checkout and get yourself 15% off. 15% off of a trucker hat? Pretty cool. I mean, most trucker hats are going to run you like, what, 25, 30 bucks? Probably 75, 80. Not not at Hydro Creep, though. No, not at Hydro Creep. Their products are already at a great price. Yeah. But with our discount code, it's spectacular. It's fucking crazy. It's creepy. How, yeah. It's honestly, it's kind of fucking creepy how low the price can get with when using our code. Yeah, go ahead and murder their profit by using yeah. CV Pod. Yeah, we're trying to. Well, first we were trying to get these guys money, like get traffic over there. But honestly, if you just keep buying, just buy stuff from them, use our code, and yeah. it'll probably drive them out of business. But you know, like that's what that's that's our goal now. Yeah, now we just actually kind of want them to go under. <laughs> <laughs> now go check those guys out at Hazard Creep. Their stuff's cool. They're still young, so uh, they're still working on new uh, new designs and coming out with new shit. It's it's awesome over there. Also, James and Josh over at Hazard Creep, respiratory therapists. I bet they would want me to quit smoking cigarettes. Guarantee it. You know what I mean? Guarantee it. Well, you know, there's this whole thing we've been doing here recently. Gibbs, he's I don't, I don't know where you're at with your vaping, but me with smoking, it's been a battle. It's been quite a battle. And, uh, yeah, I bet those dudes would probably recommend that you stop. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I think that every fucking buddy would probably say you should stop smoking. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody except for Philip Morris and goddamn self. <laughs> and he might even tell you you need to fucking stop. It's true. So, I mean, yeah, yeah smoking's bad. Vaping's bad too. Yeah, that's true. They, and they, I, I've cut back a lot. I'm still hitting. I'm still hitting the vape here. You know. Yeah. You know, little flavor, flavor. You know. But. So keep smoking cigarettes. Go support Hyzer Creep. CV Pod. Yeah. Use code CV Pod at checkout to get fifteen percent. I mean, what's gonna be cooler than rocking a fucking sick Hyzer Creep sticker on your oxygen tank? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about rolling your oxygen tank around with your fucking Hyzer Creep sticker slapped all over it. You got your hospital gown on, trucker hat, dude. Come on, yeah, yeah, be pretty sick. That would be Ooh. be pretty spooky. Spoo- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quit smoking cigarettes. Go support Hazard Creep, guys. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's um. How yeah, you got a putt confidently? Yeah, I've had one for probably a little over a month now. Yeah. Can you give what? What's your review on it? Like, okay, I'll tell you something cool about the putt confidently. First off, I'll just review it. Serious review. Uh, I've been using it for about a week now, about a week and a half. Uh, of course, I won. I won it from Anthony from Happy with Par. Once again, shout out Anthony. Uh, so he sent me that, and it's pretty fucking cool. I mean, I enjoy it, and like you said, it does make you think that you suck terribly at putting, right? Because ones that would potentially fall in do not with the putt confidently 
But then once you spin it around and it's wide open, you start to see like, oh, okay, this probably this is huge. helping. And I have noticed that too. Like it, I, I've noticed that like, okay, it does make me keep my putts tighter, mm-hmm. uh, less errant, uh, less errant putts. It definitely helps me with that. Uh, one thing I thought was funny though is when you if if you want to. If you feel like you're not really making these putts, you know, like if you feel like the putt confidently isn't helping, I'll tell you what you can do. Spin it back, spin it around. And so the putt confidently uh, thing will just be in the back and it actually catches errant putts, putts that go through the chains or to the left, you can even spin it around to where it might catch some of those <laughs> shitty left side butts. You use it as a fucking cheat. So you can actually use it for the exact opposite of what it's designed for. <laughs> and uh, you can continue your bad habits on and <laughs> at tournaments and just casual rounds, whatever you want, man. You can go back to putting incompetently. Yeah, unconfidently. Unconfidently. Yeah, I, I, I do enjoy it. And, and I don't enjoy it. I don't yeah. enjoy practicing with it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Extremely aggravating, but when you do turn it, or you when you go practice on a full basket, hundred percent feels like it's huge. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it does. it's definitely. I'd recommend it. Like I, I would, I would definitely recommend a putt confidently. Yeah, and we have nothing to do with putt. Yeah, we're, this we're is not the we we've never spoke to him or anything. If you else. thought we're about to give you a free one from setting you up with that, we weren't. We no, weren't. That like, wasn't a setup to get rid of. It, a I, I was just I, I've not really talked to Trevor about it since he got his, and I was very curious. Like, but I, I I would I think I would recommend, and maybe if you just got a di- this. I used to think those disc dots were kind of a joke, but man. I think a lot of the putt confidently is when you have such a small area to, you know, put in to make the putts in, you really are focused to aim smaller. Yeah. And it, I think I've, since I've started using that putt confidently, I think I have zeroed in on links better than I ever have in the whole time I've been playing disc golf. Even. Now on the course when I'm not there, I'm like, all right, because I'm so used to aiming small. Now I'm doing it because I'm doing, you know, I'll go back, I'll go downstairs and I'll put a hundred putts on the putt confidently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll spin it and do another twenty, and I'm like, wow, I'm fucking twenty from twenty from twenty five fucking foot when it, in normal size basket, and uh, it's just and when I'm out on the course, now I catch myself doing the same thing, like finding my link. Fucking, you know what I mean. And I don't think I ever, I, I tried to do that, like aim small. Yeah. But it, it it forces you to do it. It does. It really does. You only have thirteen inches. Yeah. Only thirteen inches is not something that you say regularly. Mm-mm. But when it comes to getting your disc in that basket, that's not a lot. Yep. In most instances, thirteen inches can be a lot. A lot. Not in this instance. No, it's very small. Very small. But yeah, oddly enough, I I just re- I really wanted. I was just curious about. Yeah, I, I could definitely see it potentially helping me getting better at putts. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I have never aimed at a link. Really? Really. Still? Still. Even, even still. I don't I don't know why. And I've known, I've, I've known of you doing it for years, ever since I've n- known you playing disc golf. You've always talked about aiming at a link. And I have small. never fucking done it. Ever. So you just aim at the... I'm just basket? like, yeah, I want it to land somewhere in there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when I look at a basket, I'm like, well, I want it to hit the pole, right? That's where you want You want it dead center. Yeah. But really just anywhere that, you know, the basket catches the disc, I'm cool with. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing that <clears throat> that the putt confidently does do, right? It gets you to aim at that very small, we're repeating ourselves, at that one small hole. So whenever I turn it around and start missing right and left, I'm like, oh, shit. I suck. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I do think it could potentially help me. I'm going to, hopefully I don't get, <clears throat> I'm concerned that I'd get to the point or I will get to the point where I just leave it turned around like an asshole and just putt on it because I'm like, oh, it's not, I don't want to waste my time if it's not catching my putts and then just go to So you the, don't want to practice. Th- that's basically what it would boil down to. Yeah. You don't want to get better. I know that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get <laughs> that, at is that I get so, um, I just get, I have zero patience, right? So that's the thing that I'm like, I hope I don't do that. I just need to stick with it because it can get 
uh, it's discouraging. Aggravating. Yeah, it's it's very discouraging. It's aggravating. Yeah, and I have I had to force myself to go down there and turn it around. Like it's it's um yeah. it, like I I I feel you like completely. Like it's sometimes it's like I just want to put on the big the whole basket, yeah. but I'll make myself do you know fifty, sixty, seventy putts on you know the putt confidently, yeah. and then do another thirty, forty full size basket. Right. You know, I, I really do think it's helping me. That's what I'm going to have to talk myself into is like right now it's spun around to where I'm, I'm not using it and it's catching all my bad putts, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> but uh, at some point I'm going to have to flip it back around and face the music yeah. and putt confidently. Yeah. So guys, go get you a, a putt confidently because they might work. Okay. This is a, a subject that not only do I want to talk to you about, but I want, I really like to hear from everybody listening. So, Listen up, folks, and comment wherever you're, if you're on YouTube or Spotify, wherever. Send us, find us on um, whatever social media, and I, I want to know your opinion on this. Um, one of our local TDs, which I'm grateful for, because um, if he wasn't throwing tournaments, we wouldn't be able to have the tournaments we get to play in. But this year, he's went to the AMs. It's um, trophy only, right? So... I'm playing my first turn, first tournament. His there's no payout for amps. It's on trophy only, and his tournaments are sixty bucks. They're all they're all C tiers, but they're sixty bucks. Two rounds, one day. You know your normal C tier shit. And I, at first, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if I like that. Right? Like, yeah. I, I even though I don't always go in expecting to win or anything like that, I do like being able to maybe get some of my money back. Yeah. You know what I sure. mean? Or a gift card to get the some plastic. Card, right. Yeah. Right. I'm always wanting to buy plastic. So a gift card is just as good as cash to yeah. me. You know what I mean? Sure. So I was kind of, I, I kind of didn't like it. And I kind of like, what, what's your, what's your opinion? Yeah. I don't know. I'm so much of a, like most of my tournament thing is just, the reason why I play tournaments is just the rating, right? Like, I'm trying to chase this rating. I need to get out of that whole thing, I guess. I don't know. Or don't. I don't know. That's a different discussion. But, yeah, I, I'm mostly just... Tr- I like a cool trophy. Yeah. I do like a cool trophy, but I'm playing in a division where trophy is not um, probable for me. It's possible, but probably not going to win or even get a podium. I may get a podium, but probably not winning MA2 for myself. But I like a good trophy, dude. Yeah. You know, I, you and I are a little bit different. We have some disagreements when it comes to, like, these events, trophies, where you're just like, I know your sentiment is tend, tends to be more like, that's, fuck, that's a cool trophy. I like yeah. You like eccentric trophies, and I don't think you're wrong. I'm just, I'm more on the Brody side, where I'm like, oh, that's a silly fucking trophy. But I do like a good... I'll tell you this, I won MA3 a few years ago at a tournament, and instead of a gift card, they they gave me like three MVP discs that I didn't throw. And I don't even think, I think second place got a cool t-shirt, and I didn't get a t-shirt. <laughs> but I was like, I would have rather had a, a fucking trophy that someone made. You know what I mean? Even if yeah. they just like, a wood, <clears throat> the fucking wood carving trophy. Okay. But... With that being said, I don't know. I think for me personally, I'm much more of just a ratings chaser, so I'm kind of okay with it. I just wish it wasn't that pricey. But the thing is, though, right like, with the money, maybe we should be getting a fucking gift card. Exactly. Okay, so we're saying sixty bucks, right? And it pays out every every they pay out fifty percent of field, right? I mean, that's I'm pretty sure that's yo know, that's what they they have to do. It's pay out fifty percent of field. So even if you didn't get a trophy, at least you got a little bit of something to come get back on that sixty bucks you spent. Yeah. With a chance with a chance to get all your money back or even a little extra in plastic or whatever you want to buy from whatever whatever store or gift card you get. Here, here's another question. If you pay sixty bucks and it's trophy only, do you expect a much better players pack as an am? Yeah, I mean, I think that should be. Do you right? think they can make up for the no payout with a 
better players pack. Say you got a great players pack and you still had a chance to win a trophy. Is that better than a, a disc with a chance of payout? Mm. And I really want to hear from mm. everybody that's listening. Like this is this is something I've been thinking about a lot. And I, I really want to know what everybody's opinion is. So make sure you get whatever you're listening to right now. If you're not driving or whatever, jump on the comment section wherever you're at. Send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you you know us at. I'm going to have to say, ultimately, I want the payout. You would. I do have- like getting the card and being like, okay, now I get to go shop. Yeah. Now I get to go pick my Frisbees yeah, uh, and collect my earnings. <clears throat> yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, because even, you know, too. top 40, 45%, like... You might get fucking fifteen dollars. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you could be middle of the pack and still get something. Something for some yeah. a piece of plastic. Yeah, right? You can go get a fucking champion T bird or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, whatever you from like. The two thousand and twenty yeah. tournament. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I would. I'm with. I think I would ultimately choose that for okay. sure. I was the same. But a way, sick trophy would be cool. <clears throat> I was the same way you were until about a week ago, and now I think I'm starting to sway on the side of. Oh. I, a great player's pack with a chance of a trophy is better. Now, listen listen to my, my think, the way I think here. Okay. This And this might not make any sense at all. Okay, if they take away the payouts, where AMs aren't getting any payouts, and you have some people, and I'm mostly speaking about MA1 and MA40 and those divisions, right? Where you're going to have, like, I'll just say MA40, because that's what I'm playing. You're going to have people like me in MA40 that wants to play in, with people their age, right? 870-ish, 875-ish, you know, that's me. But then you're also going to have, since there's no, like, really limit on it, you're yeah. also going to have some 930s, yeah, some 940s. Well, if you take the payout away from that... Would that help drive some of these nine twenty to nine fifty players to play open. to play M, yeah to play MP forty yeah where they can get payout yeah now I don't know if that's reasoning behind any of it but if that was some reasoning behind it that makes sense to me yeah now is it working I don't think so there's still <laughs> nine forty players in MA forty yeah which is fine that's, apparently these killers want a really cool trophy too <clears throat> yeah I mean and and that's fine I mean that's they're it's completely legal. Like that, sure. that they belong there. There's nothing that says they can't play it. I'm choosing to play MA40 because I want to play with people my age. Yeah. Not. I'm not. I don't go in planning to win. I don't want to. I. I. Nothing against MA3 players. Yeah. I. I've had last year. I played MA3, and I hear people complain about MA3 all the time. Like oh, I don't like playing with them. Like you know, blah blah. blah. They don't know the rules. Every card I was on MA3, yeah, there were some people that didn't know exactly the rules, but right. they would ask, and I would, ha- you know, people would help. I had zero problem with any card I played, and I played a lot of tournaments last year in yeah. MA3, and uh, so that's not an issue with me. I don't have an issue at all, but I, I would like to play with the guys my age. Yeah. But also, by doing that, I know I'm going to probably... Why are you such an ageist, dude? <clears throat> yeah. I know I'm probably going to end up getting... But fucked, right? By some nine twenties, nine forties, possibly, and possibly, yeah. I mean, possibly, I can win. I mean, they right. could have their worst rounds, and I could have my best. Yeah, you may have the home uh, home field advantage. Well, like, yeah, maybe this court, this tournament. But I'm talking about the rest of the tournaments sure. of the year. I'm gonna play MA forty all year, you know. Yeah. And but like, I, I I don't know if that's back to what I was saying. Like, I don't know if that was any reasoning behind maybe why some a TD would do that, but if it is, that makes sense to me, right? Right. And now that I'm playing in MA40, and I know I'm probably not going to, there's a good chance I won't be in the top, you know, 50%. Not with that talk. Well, well anyway, I'd rather just have the players pack. Sure. The good players pack, because at least I know yeah. I'm getting some good shit, right? Yeah. Now, I know that's... Give me the rating and the players That's kind of selfish, right? yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm also a ratings chaser myself, you know. I don't go out to win or really... I mean, I want to win. I want to compete, yeah. but, like, it really it comes down to just me trying to get to that 900 that for the next goal, you yeah. know what I mean? But uh, Bigger is better. We're size queens when it comes to ratings. <laughs> yeah, but my, my in the last few weeks, I've changed my whole attitude about it. Like, But the player's pack has to be there. <laughs> if I'm paying 60 bucks and getting... A disc and a fucking mini, yeah. and I don't have a ch- and it's trophy only. 
either those trophies better be fucking spectacular. Yeah. Like, you take a picture and Brody's like, oh, yeah, that's fucking right. <laughs> Brody better love this Brody, fucking trophy. Brody better love it. Gotta be it. Brody approved. Yeah. For, for 60 bucks, it better be Brody approved trophy. And, or, like, if if the player's pack's not right up to par. Yeah. It better be a, a badass fucking trophy. But, I mean, all three of them, not just first place. I'm talking about third places better be rad. Second yeah. places better be really rad. And first place better be fucking amazing. Yeah. 60 bucks, you got 15 people in a goddamn division. Do the fucking math. That's yeah, 900 that's all, goddamn dollars. Yeah, where's it going? <laughs> that's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. It better be going in the fucking trophies. Sure. If there's no payout, players pack and trophies. I mean, I'm I, I, I'm with that. But if it's a if it's a sick players pack, like the one we're getting this Saturday, I think it's a cool players pack. Right? Yeah. It's got a it's got a Innova umbrella, a disc, mm-hmm. I think a, a chalk bag. Probably and the disc selections are great. Too. Yeah, so I'm I'm not mad. I umbrella I I. I'm good with the Innova umbrella. I think that's great. I mean, yeah, I, I've I'm always wanted anything. one of those cool Innova umbrellas. <clears throat> yeah, I really have too. To <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm not. I don't have an issue with that. And if if so, it, you know, if the TD or whatever TDs, if they're spend, if they're charging that much and there's no payout, they need to make sure the players' pack's worth it. Or it's. I don't think it's going to go over good. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, because I this is a kind of an experiment. I will burn the mother. <laughs> <laughs> I will burn fucking Tournament Central down, dude. <laughs> Open up the pit in Tournament Central. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I want to hear everybody's opinion, though, right? I and mean, I wonder if that's what the reasoning was for the trophy only, just to drive those people, almost force <clears> them <throat> to play. Like that, that the people that were chasing the money yeah it kind of forces them to play up to be like but i think i think a lot of those people though might just be chasing the wins like you know i mean they want to say you know i won and like i said dude there's nothing that says they can't fucking play in it so fucking more power to them you know what i mean that's that's fair too like trophies are cool and the whatever the payout is is pretty cool as an am obviously it's always gift cards but that's awesome but you want the glory, dude. Yeah, for you sure. You want to be able to say I took the dub. Yeah, for sure. But having something to show for it yeah. is even... You know, you, know how many, you know how many wins I've got beside my name on my PDGA page? How many? Zero. Oh, I've got two. <laughs> yeah, i got zero. Well, you're changing. It's gonna it. change it. This you're changing year. that shit. This I don't year. care if I have to go down the MA4. I'm gonna get a fucking <laughs> win this shit. This be fucking hilarious. I'm chasing trophies, yeah. bitch. You just start playing like ass to get your rating down low enough to where you can compete in MA4, and you're like, "Well, I'll know I'll beat these motherfuckers <laughs> with a couple 900 rated rounds." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you just you can't hit a 900 rated round again after that. You're like, "This is what I get." Um, I wish there was an MA30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't. I wish I could have my own protected division. <laughs> just a bunch of fucking single guys that are just trying to figure it out. Did you get uh, the email today? This this was recent. about the There was a survey that PDGA sent all their members asking. It's pretty much only about uh, Disc Golfer Magazine. Yeah. Uh, I think you said you may have heard. That. I'd heard about it. I read a little bit of it on Reddit, but I haven't. I didn't actually get the email. Don't they fucking lose my email address? They usually send me all the other bullshit. PJ always sends me things that I never read. I bet this it's, one I bet particular it's, I thing. I bet it's there somewhere. I looked. Maybe they sent to random people. I check spam. I got it. I don't know what to tell you. No, it was just pretty much asking. The survey is asking. Do you read it? Yeah. Do you read the uh, the um, the electron or the uh, one on the website, the disc golfer magazine, the um, digital? version or the uh, is it also disc golfer yeah okay i, I guess both. it's the same it's the same magazine but it, there's a digital version on pdga website so you <clears throat> you think maybe they're they're taking a survey to see if they should nix it uh maybe, maybe. putting fillers out there to see if i think so yeah see i if mean people are still interested yeah. in I, I i personally i i love the physical copy of it like yeah. I, I always it goes right there by my my recliner, and I'll flip through it, and I'll read an article here and there. Or yeah, love looking at the advertisements of the new discs coming out. You know, sure. what I mean? and then I do something wild. Um, I jerk off with it. I use it to jerk <laughs> off. <laughs> well, I have. Yeah. Uh, uh, I tell you what I do, and I, I advise everybody to do this. And this isn't funny, but this is kind of is funny. They try to force fucking disc off on people. 
I'll fucking I'll take a sharpie and sharpie up my address, and then like when I go to my dentist, I'll mm-hmm. carry it in there and read it until I damn go back, and then I'll just lay it down on the table with all the other magazines yeah. and leave it for the next unlucky <laughs> patron that goes to the dentist's like, what office. The fuck <laughs> this golf. Yeah, yeah. What's this doing next to Golfer magazine? <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought this fucking abscess tooth was the worst thing that's going to happen to me today. Yeah, turns out there's a <laughs> shitty sport named disc golf, and they fucking force me to read it out here. What you do is you throw away all the other shits, like the Better Homes and Garden books. The highlighters. Yeah, highlight. highlight books, yeah. Throw all those out and just leave all four, <laughs> the last fucking Year worth. Semi, last year's worth, so just four copies right there. It did ask, like, uh, if there was one thing you could change, what would it? I said, I'd like for it to be bi-monthly. I'd like to get six. I mean, yeah. I, four's cool, but six would be even better. I wonder if <clears throat> a lot of people aren't going to share the same feelings as you do. I'm kind of also indifferent about Disc Offer Magazine. I like it. Yeah. I do like it. If they cut it out, I'd be like, mm. because I don't spend a lot of time reading them, I'm, but I do what you do as well, where I like to have a copy laying around my house. I really do, like... For the longest time until I thought about how disgusting it was, I left it in my bathroom just in case someone wanted some reading material. <laughs> but then the thought of leaving reading material in your bathroom grossed me the fuck out. So I took that, took it out. Now you just use the thing you put to your mouth all day long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. yeah. Instead, you use a phone. And you shit next to <laughs> your phone you hold all the it time. to your face like 10 minutes later. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Eat food after handling it. Yeah. <laughs> you really do forget about that. Yeah, I no. can't even shit without my phone. Now. No, I went to the shitter at work the other day, and I left my phone sitting oh on like the desk. God. And I was like, I would go to sleep. I, I sat there and I was like, uh, what? It, uh. what do you do? <laughs> I don't know. Oh I couldn't God. shit. Like it wouldn't come <laughs> you out. Couldn't even shit. Get out of here. <laughs> couldn't even take a shit. My body was all thrown off, dude. <laughs> it wouldn't even come out. Dude. I like, just. What the fuck? <laughs> Well, I actually have been like washing my phone with my hands after I shit. <laughs> I just wa- I just squirt the fucking soap on Go the phone, Joe. and I'm just Gojo. Yeah, at work, at work we put the green Gojo on our phones and shit. Uh, what were we saying? Oh, disc offer magazine. Yeah. Uh, I like to leave copies of it laying around though, <clears throat> but I don't really. Um, I'm kind. Of, if they do away with it, whatever. It's kind. Of, it'd be an end of an era. That'd be a bummer. Be I would hope. I would hope that nobody. What's dumb enough to say, yeah, I don't read it, or it sucks. I've heard most... Why would you take, why would you take a chance of them taking, even if you don't, give it to somebody. Well, just give it to somebody. Well, I'd read on Reddit, people complaining about, oh, maybe they'll get rid of the magazine and lower their monthly subscription. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, you mean the yearly? Or the yearly subscription membership. Yeah, that's not happening. What? No. They're not going to do that, first no. off. They're gonna, they might take the magazine away, but the price won't go down. Yeah, the, you think that's just, <laughs> oh, well, now we can finally make it only $20 a month. Yeah. What? No, it's uh, is it, that's not happening. We're only up and up, baby. They're gonna, If anything, we're, they're going to charge us more coming up. Yeah. Or maybe maybe they'll have that as an add-on. Like, it's 50 bucks, but if you want to keep on getting your four fucking magazines, it's going to be... 65 oh yeah the price of the price of your membership's not gonna go down no i'm sorry that's not happening yeah now the price of the magazine might go up like that might actually be a thing that they do is try to charge extra like for the old you know how like like you can add you can (laughs) fuck you (laughs) (laughs) like like uh you know how you can add the disc each year or whatever that disc offer magazine might be an add-on starting next year we don't we don't know i hope not because i do enjoy it We'll see what they do with it. It would be the it would be the end of an era. It'd bum a lot of people out, dude. Uh, yeah. Well, we had our own magazine. Yeah. And then we just the, no more. There'll still be That'd a be magazine, sad. but it might just cost more. Might cost. I actually. hope you're right, man. I, I, I'd like for I'd like for it to be a monthly mag. Like I really, I probably would pay twenty dollars a year extra yeah. if I if they sent us a monthly mag that yeah. you know had all the sure. stats and whatnot in it for each term. I, that, I think that'd be cool. I don't think they'd get rid of it anyways. They have to be making. They surely make money off of it, right? With like ad rev, just yeah, ad for space. Sure. Yeah, the right? ad space. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's how magazines make there. Dude, how come we haven't looked into that? Because we're we don't make any fucking money, man. We're <laughs> With broke. what money? Yeah, <laughs> what? I can't. We can't. It's disc offer magazine. How much is it gonna cost? <laughs> fucking fifteen bucks? Come on. <laughs> it ain't even. It's not even as much as like getting your ad in the local paper. <laughs> it's disc offer. All right, let's uh, Waco. Waco. I'm excited about it. 
You want? We got a quick story. Quick story of Waco. Yeah, we're going. We're gonna go on tour again. <laughs> this one's a little bit. Uh, there's no dog fucking in this one, which no, is no, no. very disappointing. We were hoping to find something to do with bestiality. Turns out, Waco's a pretty up and up place. Besides uh, the. FBI burning children yeah. to death. <laughs> yeah, except for the whole Waco massacre that happened there back yeah, in the early nineties. If you try to find, like, f- you you can look up literally put in Google funny Waco news stories, and it's just fucking about the Branch Davidian. Yeah, it's about the Waco siege. <laughs> You're like, what the? Fu-? That's there's That's nothing not funny. funny about this. It's not funny. Yeah. Also, aside from that, there was just other news headlines. I'm just trying to find funny headlines to read off on the podcast, and it's like. 25 year old man sentenced for murdering eight month old and i'm like all right well thanks for recognizing oh, well, that's pretty funny that is fun. yeah what the fuck google is that really funny but you were able to actually find a good story do you want to run it or you uh, want me to read yeah it? read it okay so the headline reads as and by the way this is 2017 so older article like we said Kind of tough to find funny news yeah. articles in Waco. Waco's goes up and up, dude. Yeah, they're doing just fine. There's no dog fucking, no cat a, fucking. Not a bunch of weird Florida-style <laughs> stories. Apparently, Texas is completely cool. Yeah. Uh, but the the headline reads, Haunted Couch has drawn visitors to Waco store for past decade. Okay. A couch. <laughs> An old couch in Waco that some say has a sinister past has remained at a local consignment store for 10 years. Colton Birch, who co-owns, co-owns the consignment furniture showroom at blah, 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 said the couch was dropped off by a spooked customer a decade ago. He was, so, it was the couch, so, <laughs> couch was spooking him, so they had to. So they had to, it was said a strange sulfur smell was coming from inside his home, <laughs> kitchen, and cabinet doors were open. Oh, let me read you that. A strange smell was coming from inside his home, kitchen, cabinet doors were opening on their own, and cell phone signals cut out. As one got close to the sofa. So this couch had so many farts in it. It had been farted on so many times. But it was just seeping all the It was open into the goddamn kitchen cabinet. No shit. That's how, the haunted <laughs> fart couch? Come on. Sulfur smell. The alleged paranormal activity continued at the consignment store. Alleged? Sounds real to me. Did yeah. you hear the man? <laughs> it's cabinets were open. Yeah. Birch said customer information was erased from the computer system with no explanation. Sounds like maybe yeah. he did that to kind of cover <laughs> up some tracks and be like, it was the fart couch. <laughs> I didn't have kid porn on her, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> it was that spooky, stinking-ass fucking couch. It was a farted ghost couch, dude. <laughs> I don't know if it was a computer glitch or if it was the sofa, he said. Just some dude. Like, Hell, I don't know if the couch did it or what. If it was just technology at it again. Goddamn feds. Probably not the couch. Uh, the couch was later relocated to another area of the store, but two similar accidents happened to former store employees. Their, their computers, their kitty board got erased too. <laughs> what it's, it's fucking all their computer systems up. One of the employees got in a a minor car accident, and then we also had another employee who was in a minor fender bender the night after touching or moving the couch, says Birch. Damn. So just anything that the couch touches or has anything... uh, a lot of people don't want to have anything to do with it. It's, but it stinks, so, motherfucker. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy a couch that smells like yeah, also, shit. Was, <laughs> that is hilarious. Like, Get that fucking stinky couch out of your store and stop making excuses as to why your business is failing. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's that stinking ass fucking haunted couch. I can't couch. make a goddamn dollar because this couch is here. The store's owners said ghost hunters tested and confirmed <laughs> that the stain... Was blood. There was a stain Whoa. on the couch. Sorry, I didn't read that part. Oh, there was a stain been on the couch. Much better. Been way more appropriate for this podcast if it had been a cum stain. <laughs> yeah, paranormal investigators came to that conclusion. Ooh, that's, that's cum, cum. dude. <laughs> Are you sure it's not like ectoplasm or like blood? They're like, nah, dude, that's jizz. That's dried up cum. You don't need to be a fucking paranormal expert to tell you that. You need a black light, dumbass. You don't need us. <laughs> Uh, they also said a hole in the back of the couch could be from a bullet, but no one knows the full history of the sofa. God damn, they're really scratching their heads over this, aren't yeah. they? That's amazing. <clears throat> well, but 
I'll tell you what, Judy uh, Gendrit does not believe the couch is actually haunted. She is now the owner of the couch. She says, nothing scares me. My faith is the Lord and not a ghost or the devil. God took the stank right out of this son of a bitch. <laughs> God take the stank out of this couch. <laughs> That's Jesus from Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> That's God's come. Leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, well that's the best we can do on waco guys there you go there's a story from waco and i'm excited about waco uh this is one of my favorite runs honestly brazzers east <laughs> great fucking <laughs> brazzers <laughs> not brazzers i say brazzers yeah east. we called it brazzers dude yeah but uh <clears throat> i'm excited about waco until next week that's pretty much it i don't know uh, fantasy real fast oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're going to start doing fantasy picks. I've contacted the people, the app we're running this fantasy league through. and um, Heiser Base. I asked them. Yeah, I wasn't going to say their names because I asked them <laughs> if they wanted to sponsor this segment. And they won't come get back to us, which I wouldn't get back to us either. So, fuck it. It's Heiser Base. Um, <laughs> but we run in a weekly league. So, we get to pick five players each week that we think will finish on top. We're doing two leagues, one MPO and one FPO. We are going to give y'all three picks of our five because we're afraid the people in our league will be listening, mm. and we don't want to give them all five of them. Every way. everyone in the disc golf world listens. We can only assume that the guys that we have in this league. Will oh listen. no, we pretty much know these people yeah. are listening. But go ahead and give me three of your FPO. Okay. Well, three of the FPO. Let me find it real fast. All right. I'll give you my three strong ones, bud. Okay. I'm going to go Chris and Tatar easy. Yeah. But also, maybe not. Is that a great the first the choice? First, I mean, I don't. I doubt she's going to come in not ready. Right. But we'll see. The, we'll other, see. the other ladies do have um, a tournament on her. So, yeah. I mean, it's they've... not necessarily taking a leap, but <clears throat> could be considered questionable to some. That would no. be great. It's not yeah. a question. No. Okay. I uh, also have Chris and Tatar, so we'll just do that. We'll do that, yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming we might have three to sing. So. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. If we got to pick anybody, come on. It's yeah. going to be the heavy hitters. Uh, Holland Hanley. Also have her, her on there. I do, too. Easy pick. Uh, Natalie Ryan. I do not. Have as my Ryan. third, almost kind of, I wouldn't say dark horse pick, but maybe, yeah. No. I don't think She's it's a bad definitely thing. capable. The golf course or Waco Lake or whatever it is, the the, the new course. They playing. say it's a they say it's a long course, so it's they say up. they say it's best for trans athletes. <laughs> it should <laughs> be fine. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I do not have her. I have. I'll throw this one out. Valerie, Valerie Mondujano. That will be my third one that I'll give out. So. Hmm. All right. I'm Solid gonna, pick. I'm going to jump over MPO real fast. Okay. Okay. I'm there too. Um, I took this is my top three real fast. Ricky Tricky Ricky Wysocki. Gannon. Also tri Tricky Ricky myself. Gannon Burr. Also, same. And I'm going to say Matty O on my third Wow. One. Didn't go Matty O for my third also, they're all just badasses. Yeah, that's a good thing about weekly. Calvin. Okay. There you go. Not super fun and exciting, but I'm not good at. I don't know if I'm going to be good at uh, fantasy league. I still, I don't just think. I don't think I'm really good at strategy in general. Yeah. The thing about this is the weekly league. The, the strategy in this is that you do need to make one or two picks that you think somebody else might not pick because if everybody just picks the same five the whole time, which a lot of people are going to pick. Ricky Wysocki, sure. right? So that fourth, fifth pick is the ones that you can either make it or break it on, right? Yeah. So, all right, guys. We appreciate you listening. Guys and gals. I say guys. I know we, we love the ladies listening, You know listening the ladies listening. Yeah. Come on. We appreciate y'all listening. Very grateful for y'all listening. Yeah, very grateful. Thank you guys Please so much. Please go uh, dom scribe mm -hmm. and share hit notifications hit the oh, button hit shit. the button to where when the bell makes the vibrating look thing mm -hmm. that you get a notification whenever we put out an episode make our bell vibrate make our ring our bell ring my bell ring my bell bye